I'm Mrs. Terry. I teach fifth grade at Cackley. And this is a combined group of Mrs. Dix and Miss Blackwell's class um, here for a lesson on the data cycle. Exponent. I noticed there's no key. Ooh, interesting. Who can tell me more? I noticed that there's no dead leaves. There's no dead leaves. What do you mean that's something we made up? What does dead leaves mean? Um, it means there's no leaf to the stem. It means there's no stem to with no leaves, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. Good catch. Um, I noticed that there's 12 numbers in total. 12 pieces of data. Tell me more. How did she know that? How did she know that? Yes. Good job. By counting all the leaves. The counting the leaves. Very good. Excellent. I noticed that there's more, more than one type of mode. There's more than one mode. Mode, that's one of our fifth grade vocab words. What is mode? What is mode, Pranav? Catch. Um, it's the number that repeats the most. Very good. So what is the mode? Oh. What is the mode? Ellie. Seven, nine, and six. Remember, is it seven or is it, what is the true piece of data? Very good, 37 and also? 39. Very good and 66. So how many pieces or how many modes are there? Show me with your fingers please. How many modes are there? Three. Excellent. All right. Anything else you notice or wonder? Carter. The range is 33. The range is 33. Who can tell me more about that? Tell me more about the range. Sever? You get the range by subtracting the very good. I like how you switch that. The lowest number, which is, shout it. Oops. And the biggest number, which is 70, right? And that just switched slides on me. There we go. Are we back there? Great. Who can tell me more? I noticed that it's for the weekly high temperatures this winter. Oh, and that is called the what? The title. The title. Very good. What type of graph is this? Open up. Open any. Stem and leaf plot. Very good. Great. All right. There's so many more things that we can notice and wonder on this, but I think we did an amazing job. All right. Today's lesson, look at all our objectives that we've built on. Okay, we've been learning about the data cycle, and today we're going to kind of combine everything we've learned about the data cycle. Who can remind us the first step in the data cycle? The very first step. Yes. A question. A question. Very good. I would like us to think in our groups about a question that we could ask to accumulate data about birthdays. Brainstorm in each group, please. Richmond, Virginia. All right, it's a new week. We've already mastered Richmond, Virginia. Today, this week, we're going to start Atlanta, Georgia. So let's try it. Atlanta, Georgia. Very good. All right. So, what did you guys come up with? What types of questions about birthdays could we use to collect data? Yes. What month is your birthday? What kind of data would we collect on that? 
Carter? So the question was, uh, how, how many... Hold that. That's okay. She said we could collect what month is your birthday. So what is our data going to be? Yeah. Uh, everyone's birthdays. Everyone's birthdays. If you don't have a paper, you can grab one. Yes. Um, another question could be how many birthdays are in each month? How many birthdays are in each month? I think that's where she was going. So we could do months. What else could we do? What other data could we collect about birthdays? Ellie? Oh, gemstones. I didn't think of that. I like that. Good. What else, Sean? Uh, how, what age you're turning in, and how old everybody's turning on your birthday. How old you're turning? Are we going to have a big range or a big spread if we do that one? No. No, because everyone's turning either what? 10 or 11. Right? That's interesting. But we still could collect data. It just isn't going to have a big spread. Good. What else could we do? Besides month. Yeah? What year you were born. What year? That's going to give you about the same results as Sean. What else? Yeah. Um, constellation of your birthday? Oh, man. You guys are taking this to another level. I didn't think of that. Well, when I was thinking about this, I also thought about our birthday. Right? You may be born on the 12th, but you may be born on the 14th, but you may be born on the 11th, right? Mm -hmm. What would our spread be there? Oh, it could be from 1 to what? 31. Okay. Decide in your groups. We're going to take a vote. Decide in your groups whether you want to do birthday or month. We're going to do the same thing as a class. So decide in your groups, please. Thank you. All right. Atlanta. Georgia. Raise your hand if your group decided on month. We have five groups here. On month. Nobody? Well, that makes it easy. Thank you for making it easy. All right, so we all have in front of us the data cycle, except you can't see it up here yet, can you? So formulate a question to be explored with data. What is our question? I love how Sever has his hand raised. Thank you. Yes, Sever. Okay, who can say that a different way? Yeah, Lily. What day is your birthday? What day is your birthday? Yes. Like birthday dates. Birthday dates? Is there between the two birthday dates? Oh, okay, you're taking it another level. All right, so let's see here. Formulate a question to be explored with data. <coughs> How about dates of dates of fifth grade birthdays? Excellent. I love how you know when I do, you do. Second step in the data cycle is what? Collecting. Collecting data. Right. So now we have to collect data. This might get a little hairy. Right? We have to go through how many dates? 31. But we can do it. So you guys are going to have to raise your hand really tall when I say a date. If your birthday is the one I call, you're going to raise your hand. We're collecting data. Anyone have the first? One? Two? Three? Four? 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, ooh, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, Twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one. 28, 31, ooh, very good. Okay, so we have our data. That was kind of painless, right? Now, I made this a little easy for you because these numbers are already in what? Order. order. What is that fancy mathematical word that we learned about order? Yes. Ascending, ascending order. And what does ascending order mean? Going yeah. Up. Least to greatest. Least to greatest. Ascending. Going up. Very good. So we already have these in ascending order. Who remembers when we get a big group of data, what we're going to do next? Let's see. Yeah. We're going to do that, but before we do that, yes? Count them. Count them. We need to know how many pieces of data we have. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Put it off to the side and circle it. Make sure you circle it so you know it's not a piece of data. <coughs> Awesome. Really good job, you guys. Okay, the next step in the data cycle is what? What is it that you said? Do you remember? Order. Carter, go ahead. Organize. Organize our data. Discussion in your group. What type of graph would best represent this data? Would it be a line plot? or a stem and leaf graph. Go ahead and discuss it in your groups, please. Uh, line plot, line plot. Yeah, 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 line plot. Because I, there'll be like Atlanta. Georgia. Great. What did we decide? Raise your hand if your group decided a line plot. Okay. Raise your hand if your group decided stem and leaf plot. Interesting. Who can explain why you chose the stem and leaf plot? Yeah. Okay, good. Who can tell me more? Yeah. There's a lot of numbers and a lot of big numbers, too. There's a lot of data. If we did a line plot, we would have to have each number, right? All the way up to 30, 30. We would have to have all the numbers spread out. That would be a really long line plot. And what's the most number of x's we would have? Oh, uh, 23. Well, the most number, most number of x's would be for 19, right? So there'd be three of them. So I think a stem and leaf plot is the right choice. So down here where it says organize and represent data, it asks which type of graph. You're going to write stem and leaf plot. And I'd like you to answer the why on your own. 
to help guide you, think about how many stems you would have. Is it a manageable num number? I know you're ready to move on when your pencil's down. All right, great. What I would do now is I would tear these two sides. There's a reason I didn't copy it front to back. Okay, tear it off. That way you have the data next to you to make your graph. So your next step is you are gonna take the data that we acquired and make a stem and leaf graph. What can you use to help you? Because I know it was a long weekend. What can you use to help you? Yes, your notes in your binder. I give you notes, we take notes for a reason. You may get them out. It'll help remind you what, how to make a title, how to make a key, and then you're gonna find mean, median, mode, and range. All right, begin. Thank you for joining us at Cackley Elementary for our math lesson on the data cycle. Go Coyotes! Ah!